Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Hi, tribe. I'm Evelyn. And I'm Versavia. And you're listening to Objectively Typed, a podcast where we do explore the objective personality system. Sorry, my tongue is like not cooperating today. So <laughs> today, uh, continuing my tradition of picking um, sci-fi people, I've uh, decided to type LeVar Burton, who played Geordi LaForge on uh, Star Trek The Next Generation, which is one of my absolute favorite shows. It's still like comfort viewing for me. I grew up with Star Trek The Next Generation. It's just like cheesy and everything for me. So um, yeah. I've never actually watched it. I mean, yeah, I passively because my brother was always watching it, but yeah, I never did. There's been a theme. I noticed the pattern <laughs> that I, my like super nerdy stuff is, is usually not your, uh, what you've consumed, I'll say. Okay. Oh, yeah. what sci-fi tradition are we continuing? I didn't, I haven't noticed that. Um, um, we did, I did Star Wars, whose name is uh, escaping me right oh, now. Oh, oh, Ahmed. Jar Binks, Ahmed Best. Yeah, 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 that's also right. Also my choice, yep. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so LeVar Burton, um, I can't remember, do we usually, like, overview the person first, or do we jump right yeah. in? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I forgot. Uh, yeah, so LeVar Burton, uh, you know, for those of us probably of my age, of our mid-30s and, and so forth, probably kind of best known right now for Star Trek, but um, he was Kunta Kente in the miniseries Roots, which came out in the 70s, which at the time was like a landmark miniseries because it was the first time um, on American television that slavery was shown for like everything that it was, right? And Kunta Kente is kind of the, the center of that story, especially in the early parts. Like I, I've seen the miniseries, um, it starts with the story of Kunta in Africa. He gets, you know, taken into slavery and then it kind of follows his family, but like the core of it is kind of that Kunta Kente story. And so LeVar actually played Kunta Kente, which was something I didn't know growing up. Um, and he was, he was like, uh, 19 when he was cast. Yeah. I think. yeah he was won an Emmy for it. And to this day, the finale of that miniseries is one of the most watched, uh, TV show, uh, episodes of all time, which yeah. is seriously impressive because it came out in 1977. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, so yeah, he, he did that. And then he kind of didn't do much for a little while, kind of was, was trying to figure out what he wanted to do and was, you know, typecast into things and things like that, but then ended up in the PBS series Reading Rainbow, which is another thing that like kids like me grew up watching LeVar Burton and Reading Rainbow. So as a kid, I knew him as the Reading Rainbow guy and Jordy LaForge. Um, so Star Trek The Next Generation came out in the late 80s. I think he was doing Reading Rainbow and Star Trek probably around the same time. Um, I think there was some overlap there. I haven't actually looked at the years, but just given that Star Trek The Next Generation came out in like 1988, 89, I think there was some. Um, so yeah, so then he played Geordi LaForge, who was the engineer on Star Trek. And I, as a young engineer myself, like I, I love me some Geordi LaForge. <laughs> Yeah. He was also, uh, I mean, this is one of the things that Next Generation did, but he was also uh, a black man playing an engineer and he was also um, had a physical disability. Yep. Um, and those things were not things that were happening in the media at the time at all. So, or like minimally compared to how they are now. And so he, he a lot of people grew up with him as a representation of themselves, whereas they weren't really seeing it anywhere else. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. So Reading Rainbow started in 1983, actually. Um, yeah, it was one of the running shows. Yeah, so. I ran 23 seasons. 26. And, well, I'm looking at Wikipedia right oh. now. I'm censoring you. <laughs> Sorry. In one of his uh, interviews, he said 26. Interesting, because, well, we'll get into that. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, and then he, um, he, nowadays, you know, other than the, you know, Next Generation, it's like you're kind of like set for life, right? Because Star Trek Next Generation, I think, ran like, I, I'm sure it says here on Wikipedia, but something like seven seasons or something. And and then in movies, you know, and so forth. And he played Geordi LaForge through all that. Um, and and then, you know, nowadays, the you've got just kind of the, the circuit of the Star Trek conventions and things like that. And then, then he's just recently kind of rebooted reading rainbow for the digital generation kind of a thing as like a mobile app and a interactive um and not just model. a reboot he um it, it was another record-breaking thing where i think it, it was like early 2000 aughts uh where they ran a kickstarter campaign and within 11 hours they hit a, a million dollars yeah. because he couldn't find any vc funding for it and then right. It, I think, holds one of the biggest, it's like four or six million that they raised overall, and it's still um, a record for Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah so quite quite the guy um yeah. trying to think is there anything else about LeVar oh he was also a director which a few of the cast members that's one of the, the kind of traditions in Star Trek I think it was started by Jonathan Frakes um, to direct an episode and then they kind of had like a boot camp kind of thing that they would run you through uh, if you were interested in directing and so he he has directed um, some Star Trek episodes I'm, I'm looking at the Wikipedia now uh, JAG other shows and things like that um, so so he also has he a little also, bit of um, a couple of years ago there was a reboot of Roots and he produced that. That was the other thing, he, yes. He yes. really, I think, uh, spearheaded the effort on that front. Yes, 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 yes. There was a reboot of Roots, yeah, yeah. I just recently started listening to the, well, not recently, gosh, it's been a while. It's a long audiobook. <laughs> I've, been, I've been listening to the audiobook, um, which is narrated by another Star Trek actor that maybe we'll do later, is um, uh, Cisco, the guy who plays Avery Brooks. Um, was on DS9 and uh, the, the cover art for the audiobook is from the rebooted um, LeVar Burton production um, version of Roots. So the Kunta that's on that cover is not LeVar Burton. It's the, it's not the classic LeVar Burton in the Roots. That should be our cover art for this is Evelyn doing the LeVar Burton Roots. <laughs> no, don't do that. I mean, don't do that. Okay. So that's LeVar in a nutshell. Um, okay. So what's your type? Um, so I didn't know very much about LeVar going into this. I mean, um, I knew obviously that he played Jordy, uh, but that's it. I didn't know about Roots. Um, I didn't grow up with reading Rainbow, um, so I didn't know about that. Um, but I, <clears throat> it was an interesting one. Uh, he was interesting because there was nothing about his type that smacked me in the face. The only thing that smacked me was masculine sensory because he had a very, um, his memory recollection was very masculine sensory. Yeah. Aside I mean, from that. Spo spoiler alert. That's why I said, oh, that's interesting that he said 26 years. Cause I would expect him to get that right too. Yeah. <laughs> I saw the it's same. Possible. I'm, I'm not recalling. Um, maybe he didn't say 26 years and I'm yeah. remembering it wrong. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, and then I watched, uh, there is a, from a Star Trek convention, um, an interview with him and uh, Brent, who played uh, Data on um, Next Generation. And the, like, when you talk about spectrum, holy shit, because there was so much about Brent that just smacked me in the face, like mm -hmm. boom, 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 boom. And in comparison to that, it really helped me clarify um, LeVar's type. So what I ended up getting for him was um, MF, so audio, N-I-F-I, sleep, consume, blast, play. Wow, this, we're, we're close. Oh, okay. Okay. What'd you get? I just copy-pasted mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I needed to get it out. I got M-F, F-I-N-I, -I, sleep, blast, play, actually consume last. And I'll explain Oh, that. interesting. And I, you know, I, um, I could have easily landed on that type as well. Those were all areas I was very, like, murky on. So I, I'd say... The things that are definitely like I have on lockdown is save yourself, mm -hmm. save your feeling, mm -hmm. save your sleep, not blast last. Yep. Has blast. Yep. Has blast. Yeah. And at first I was a little back and forth on this, but then it kind of like really solidified um, info dominant. Okay. And then everything else I'm, I'm more back and forth. And it was like, I saw the play. I definitely saw the play, but it was because of that info dominance that I ended up with play last. Okay. Yeah. So the things that you? the thing that smacked me in the face. So this would be interesting that you got him as an observer because to me this was this was textbook decider. Good lord. It talking was also back and forth. People talking about people, and I actually have a really great example of that. That I mean, you could try to put it in the YouTube, but it makes me nervous. But uh, I'll give you a, and I wrote down the timestamp of a great, great example of it. Um, so to me, decider, F.I. Savior, oh my God, F.I. Savior. Um, to me, N.F. Saviors also was very, very clear. And then I've been using as a cross check, so I am going off book a little bit here because I've been using as a cross check the Kiersey temperaments. And he was like in that SP, so ISFP, I got him as an ISFP. And like, he has a lot of those sort of ISFP isms if you will so like i was like yeah i'm seeing sp with this guy but he's but something wasn't quite like he wasn't a standard isfp and i was like going back and forth of whether he was control or gather 
Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got masculine SE, and I have it as second. And so it's like he uses SE. You can see his SE, but it's not his savior. It's not his savior state. Um, and that's where I landed on um, NI as his second savior. Um, the things that I was a little bit more in the middle of, um, let me see. So where I would, um, yeah, so I was looking at my middle, my middle area of like, I wasn't too sure about, I think OI, some, like I said, he uses SE. I can, I could see his OE, but I was like, that savior is OI. And we're going to, I want to talk more about that. In- it's like his, like, um his hobby function. He, uh, SE is the one that he's infatuated yes. with. Well, in the way that I have him as a jumper, it's his second function. So he's going to be, yeah. he's going to have it. Um, and then I did go back and forth between play and consume last. Um, the, the way I, I came to play last, and we, so we can talk about this more later, is so I definitely saw demon consume despite reading Rainbow. In some ways, reading Rainbow to me is a symptom of demon consume. <laughs> um, and I could have easily seen, yeah. Yeah. So I definitely saw Demon Consume. I saw Blast in a savior state. That was the other thing. That's why you have him as Sleep Consume. I have him as Sleep Blast because I saw Blast as a savior. And then the reason I went with with Play Over Consume is I asked myself, how does he gather new information? He gathers it by going out and doing things. He doesn't gather it by like, well, I read about this and I, you know, he he does it by sleep. You know, I'll gather information, you know, from the tribe and I'll sleep on it. It's not, it's not taking in for himself, you know, that, that is not the way that he takes in information. He also, well, we can talk more about energy and info dominant. It's not something I feel confident enough to like change my type on, but he also has, I'll say energy dominant isms. He just, it's more like he talks about it. Um, It doesn't, it's not showing as much, but several times he was like, I'm an energy junkie. I love to do these things, like very sort of SP type things. Yes. And I don't, as an info dominant person, like I never would even say anything. You don't think about it that way. Yeah. Um, I I also, I saw that and initially I had check marks going towards energy, but then um, there was somebody who asked him about that. I don't remember in which interview it was in, but somebody asked him about the energy. And once he dug into it, what that energy speak amounted to was very NS hippie kind of like spiritual conversation rather than um, energy expenditure and use. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. I think when he talks about energy, he's talking about save your sleep, not necessarily it could be. energy it could be. dominance. It could be. Like I said, I went back and forth. I, I definitely had demon consume and I went back and forth on um, player consume as last. So I went back and forth between uh, sleep and blast, whether one was his blast seemed to be informed by his consume, which is why I, I landed with uh, activated blast. Let's get into it because I disagree. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, so observer decider. We'll start yes. there. This um, one I was also on the fence about. I was like, this is, oh my God, a decider. Um, he talks about people. So let me use like a perfect example. It was in the Shatner's raw nerve. So I don't know that, I don't know William Shatner's type, but he was playing the ESFP in this conversation. He was playing the SE observer guy, um, very much of like what questions. And then also just like not that wild by people, but, uh, LeVar, number one, he spikes on people. At one point in the interview, he actually straight up gets decider weird. Like he like has to like grab you know Shatner's hand now my mic is oh yeah it's like grab Shatner's hand he's like I need to interrupt this conversation to be real decider weird right now and I'm like oh my god you're right that was totally a decider (laughs) awkward weird moment I noticed that but I didn't dig into it and then he talks about people constantly so I wrote the the timestamp actually I took a little screenshot so I'd have the timestamp at 2652 he starts telling this story about this prop the book the prophet right but the story is not about the book the, the story is about yeah. Father McInerney. Not only do I know that it's Father McInerney because he told me that, he also told me he was at so-and-so's wedding. He tells you so-and-so's name and her married name. She's like, so my, my friend, Catherine, whatever. Catherine. Now, hey, blah, blah, blah. Now. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, yeah. we need to tell. And it reminded me a ton of their recent class on, um, oh, I forget his name. He's a ISFP. Um, there was a recent, there was a recent IP class where um, it was the same sort of thing where it was like, you don't need, oh, it was Dale Dye, Dale Dye, <laughs> and how he had all these like CIA, C- not Dale Dye, sorry. <laughs> Evelyn has demon sensory, Bob Lazar. In the okay. Bob Lazar class, he, 
he has all these CIA secrets, but he can't help but name everybody's name. And at one point, Shannon and, and Dave are like, stop naming their names. And that's LeVar. Like every single interview, if it was a person, you knew their name because he was just like, I need to tell you about these people. Um, I just, so that, that whole story with the father McInerney. And then the other, the other thing about that one was he was just a little too far in the NF world too. That was the other thing that was like, I'm a, you know, when they talk about how your saviors is like, you took that analogy, like just, just a step too far. Yeah. 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 It was that. Cause he's like, open the book. And then he, and so like Shatner, the ESFP in this construction, he just, he's like, oh yeah, Father McInerney's name. <laughs> and he's like, yes. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then, and then Shat, the Shat, he goes, okay, so what happened was, then Sh the Shatner just like puts together the story. He's like, okay, so Father McInerney knew this person and you're famous. So I'm sure he mentioned him to you. And then the guy came to the wedding with the book. That's what happened, right? And LeVar's like, yes, but it's Father McInerney's book. And, and I could feel his spirit. And oh my God, it was just like this whole weird thing. It was yeah. weird and it was decider weird. And I was like, this, he went too far. <laughs> it was like the classic, like you went too far, my friend. You're right. Yeah. yeah. I was very back and forth on decider or observer. Um, my gut was telling me decider, but when he, I just, most of the time, especially in a savior state, I just, well, savior state, like his baseline seemed to his be baseline. thing to thing, 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 thing. So his, so his baseline, you know, and I found this with the IPs when I was studying all 32 types is the IPs baseline can be, it's less people-y than EJs. Yes. And that's, that is one of the things that I was trying to, yeah, um, it is. And also because, and this is one of the reasons when, um, when I watched that interview with Brett Spiner. Um, yeah, uh, Brent Spiner, whatever his type is, he's not missing blast or play. True. Yes. You know, I and I think because of that and seeing the contrast of that next to Lavar yes. was the reason that like Brent, so, like I pinged on so many things from Brent immediately, whereas Lavar has a much richer introverted world yes, and it's much does. more hidden. Yeah. So I want to, you know, and I, I do apologize because this is one that I didn't get to put in the, in the doc. I saw in a, I saw a Brent Spiner, a, a William Shatner and LeVar Burton, all three of them together. Oh. And I, yeah. And so to me, what I, what I was seeing was, again, I don't know what Shat's type is, but he certainly was playing the role of the censor. Okay. I saw Brent as any, and that was part of the reason why he much more was like out there. And then I saw, um, I saw LeVar is that lead sleep, but he was also kind of like the two intuitives. It, it seemed like we're kind of messing with the sensor a little bit. Oh, <laughs> and, and so like, they definitely were doing that. Now everybody does everything, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I, I know what you mean on that spectrum between Brent and, and LeVar. And I honestly, like I was driving down here and I happened upon that and I was like, Ooh, because I definitely noticed Shat and LeVar aren't the same animal. Um, and then I was like, oh, but Brent is in this one. I wonder how the three of them, you know, what if, if this- That would have been interesting, yeah. Yeah, so I did, it was a little bit last minute and more of me just kind of cross-checking. Um, the other thing with Decider is, let me see, I just felt like, yeah. Oh, oh, another one was one of these weird, like, um, me versus him situations of this other priest when he was in seminary and how like it again very oh. personal it's very much like yeah. Le, like lavar there it's it's his edges you know and that's what you're looking for is like where's the person's edges it's just like um marquez brownlee too right like he was pretty balanced of things he talked about yeah time when he was in his nice balanced state but when when they spike and so that's when you're looking for the edges yeah it, it was people for LeVar. It was like that guy, I was going to, he was like, I was going to be a baseball bat the next Sunday and bash his head in. And he's talking about, yeah. he's talking about seminary. <laughs> and he named that guy's name too. It was Chris. Yeah, he did. But I think the punchline of that particular story was that that guy ended up becoming one of his, his very friends. close friends. But yeah. again, it's about people, right? It's a, a lot of his lessons are about people. A lot of his big ahas is I need a support group to follow what I want. Like what he wants he is talk about role models. Yeah. 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 That was the, that was one of the first like decidery things that I heard from him was he was talking about role models. He talks about Jordy in the third person, like all of these little things that 
pointed to a uh, decider. Yeah. I think one of the big check marks I had for double decider was, um, I don't remember which interview it was in when he was talking about Gene Roundberry. Um, and he's talking about like, yes, he was brilliant in all of these ways, but he also had all of these flaws and he just, he went back and forth really see. easily. Yeah. But I also had a question of like, is this a revelation? Is this a learned lesson? That's what I got from it was he learned. Cause in his mind, people are either good or bad or bad. And then he was like, but I learned. Yeah. That people are complicated. That gene like, was, yeah. Words for that. Cause, cause he, I think he had him on a pedestal. It's just like this guy walks on water. Like, like the way that he constructed that was very much like a learn to me. It was very, yeah. yeah. I think that was in like a Tom, one of the Tom. No, he was only on Tom. Oh, yeah, it was with Tom Tom. It was either with Tom or Lewis House, because wasn't he on both? There's no Lewis House interview yeah, in, there our, was in Tom... our data set. Yeah, no, uh, there Chase was... Jarvis. Ch- Chase Jarvis. Chase Jarvis. I was going to say. It's I was not like, in the Chase one. I think it's in the Tom Tom one. But anyway. Tom Tom one. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Um, let me see. So that's, yeah, I, I landed on Decider. Um, and this is one area that I've... I was very on the fence for that one, but now I, I agree. I think you make a really good case that, yeah, this is definitely decider talk. Yeah. And those are some really great examples of like the spiking that yeah. I did not it was pick up on. Spiking. Um, yes. Man, I had a whole thing. Here it is. I made a whole document about organized versus gather if we want to go there next. <laughs> because oh, yeah. I had a hard time. So I had a hard time with observer versus, dis- I mean, not, excuse me, with uh, gather versus organized, which I did too. Which is another, too. you know, cross check for double observing, right? I, yeah, that's true. Um, I had him locked down on S E N I access. I, yeah. Early, early on, I, I, I waffled. I'm like, I, I, I'm like, could it be NESI? But he I waffled just, on um, it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree totally. When I, he talks about experiences, it's in a very SE kind of way. Yeah, it, uh, very much. Yeah, it is. A gather, like, I'll gather these experiences and then put a through line through them. Yeah. Yes. Um, and his blast is NI blast. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, so we're, I am kind of skipping identity versus tribe because I think we both agreed that, oh my God, FI, <laughs> I was thinking about joking, jokingly coming on here and saying, I think he's FE just because like Evelyn has a tendency to call. So my very first read of him was actually potentially SCFE mm, okay. uh, or no, I saw him like my very first biased read was FESE. Yeah. Um, I was thinking that maybe he's that. And then I looked up some FESEs and I'm like, no, he's not that. Yeah. The, um, the big thing that helped helped me because I, I could see so I could see decider, I could see feeling. And so I was trying to find a good question for tribe versus self. And uh, one of our castmates, actually Kendrick, uh, who I interviewed on this channel a couple weeks ago, go check that out. Plug, plug. Um, <laughs> he, he said, are they going after what they want? Or are they conscious of the perceptions of the tribe, basically? Because EJs, and this this I've experienced, and maybe as a mini EJ myself, like we are kind of like when we when we talk, it's like the tribe is the authority on us, whereas the DIs are like driven by what they are passionate about, and that kind of helped me with him because his whole thing was he knew what he wanted. It was more like, can I get the tribe on board with what, what I, I want? want? What I want isn't, wasn't ever a mystery. I mean, he even went into the seminary at the age of eight because he knew he wanted something like that. Like, I wouldn't have been, it. well, that's not true. I wanted to be an astronaut from a young age too, but it was a less <laughs> sort of like commitment, like a, you it, know, it, it was it, a, and yeah. I imagine too, like, yeah. I think it's not only knowing what you want, it's that, so the way I've kind of started thinking about it recently, and this is like just a couple of days ago, where I think Savior D.I., assumes that everyone is acting from a space of individuals whereas savior de assumes everyone is acting from a space of the collective from the, you know, perspective of the collective. that's that's a good that's a good that's a good one and i um there was a great example of a of a question like that it was on the tom the tommy tom tom bill you one where tom asks him as a you know tom is a ti right yeah he asks him what do you say to somebody who doesn't have passion and like lavar is like what do you mean you don't have passion what does that even it just mean? Means, his answer was, it just means you have not seen enough <laughs> yes. to find your passion. Exactly. Keep that looking. was his answer. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Keep looking. You're up by someplace. But his initial answer was, yeah, his initial hit was like, what? And then, yeah, his answer after he kind of had to like consider was yeah. keep looking. That's got to be it. And that like, no, yeah. One. 
save your sleep. That was one of the things that pointed to save your sleep. Yes. Also, this is one of the things that like, I initially thought he was tribe and I was seeing like some FE-isms. But anytime people asked him questions, his response always started with, well, I would never want this. Or, (laughs) well, if I was in that situation, Mm -hmm. if I, if I, if I, and I'm just like, he's filtering everything from the perspective of the individual. Yeah. And who is he looking to? himself right he's looking in the mirror at what do i want and he's putting (laughs) pressure on himself yes that's where that like masculine di was coming through where like he's putting pressure on himself and he's also putting pressure on individuals all over the place like um where was it uh well he's talking about addiction Mm -hmm. um as a disease and he acknowledges that it's a disease and then right afterward he says but it also begins and ends with a choice (laughs) yeah Yeah. which is like yeah exactly it's just a given it's a given that you have that you have that agency yeah yep yeah yeah Yeah. so yeah that was that was good so he was a good example uh of masculine fi uh in a savior and 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 how it can be really cool and compassionate and everything right because sometimes sometimes yeah of course um, those masculine savers get this reputation of being kind of punchy and stuff but no like no it was just very clear of what he wanted that's what i'm attracted to in masculine so my animal is attracted to masculine fi right right now and that's what i'm attracted to i'm like myself i'm like man it would be so nice to just have this solid like i know i want this and just go after it because i have the classic like enfp too many ideas not enough getting it done thing you know and yeah 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 Yeah, he's um and i think we haven't quite used this word to describe him yet but and i was really pleasantly surprised as we're going through but he's alpha as fuck oh yes yes yes. like he (laughs) is just whatever his type is whatever his animals yeah he has accomplished some really impressive things and he also approaches it all with kindness and compassion so much kindness and compassion in a very like uh, I, I checked out Jason Wilson and I was like, is he Jason Wilson's type? He's not, cool. not Jason He's Wilson's not, type. Not Jason. <laughs> I didn't see his blast plane next to each other with yeah. quite the same yeah. energy. His, his, um, he didn't seem super introverted, nor did he seem super extroverted. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. Um, so organize versus gather. Like I said, I had to like write down an entire time yeah. on it. And what I did was, and this is, I think this is the first time I've tried something like this, is I rewatched the Tom Bilyeu class with only gather versus organize in mind. That was it. Or Tom Bilyeu. Yeah, Tom um, Bilyeu class? I didn't mean class. I meant oh. interview. Interview. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Tom Bilyeu interview. Interview. Oh, okay. Nothing only with that question. Yes. Okay. And so when I was doing that, I was just pinging on organize, organize, organize. <laughs> um, yeah. um, it's funny because I think, I think he, I don't, I don't know if aware of it, but like he doesn't, it's the classic thing where we really don't, it's almost like we don't want our saviors or they're not that special to us. Mm-hmm. Because he, there was a part where like um, Tom asked him, like, have you planned all of this or something like this? And he was like, well, I wish I could cop the, to having it all planned out kind of like he it's this not not awkwardness but it's like that's his savior you know what I mean like he values it he values having a plan and getting and doing it that way that's the way sort of you should do it you know in his mind like it wasn't the OE way of like well I'll I'll improvise as I go and I'll figure it out as I go and I'll just take in more it was like I want to build I I'm, I'm savior obligated to be that way you know? Yeah. Yeah. It was also very much when he was talking about planning, it was also very much, let me plan the broad strokes. I'm not going to plan the sensory SI details of everything. Correct. It was kind of like, oh, I'm going in this general direction and that's enough for me. Yep. 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 Um, and, he oh. had, and then the other, one other thing on that, he said, and I, the only thing I wrote down was have to be willing to be open seemed like a, like a lesson to him. Like, like the idea of taking risks, the idea of being open to new things was like a learning. Like he was yes. like, I had to learn to be open. I had to learn yes. to take risks. That didn't, I wasn't just out here flying around and I had to learn to control myself, right? right. It was more like I had to expose myself a little bit more because I'm naturally an OI. That's yeah. that's my home, yeah. Very much so, yeah. yeah. I also saw, um, and I saw this in a couple of different interviews. So this is one of those things that he's probably shared many times yeah. over his career was that when he talks about success and how you might set out for certain things, 
it might not be what you expect it to be. Yes. <laughs> and he said that quite a lot. And that's I mean, definitely coming from a place of like, oh, I have this NI vision of what I'm expecting. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the sensory is not what it is. And that's okay. Yeah. That's yeah. the big lesson. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then one more, I guess, just to just stomp on organize was you know uh again that that shatner interview was one of my favorites it was kind of short but like those two are so different that that a lot of things to me played out because there was a point in there where shatner asks him about the seminary right and, and lavar tells the story that he told other things of well the men in my family went to the military and the women were teachers yes. and yes. and shatner goes well to me the seminary is the same thing they tell you what to think. They tell you what to eat. Like, don't control me, bro. <laughs> like, he goes. Yes, yes he pinged on the EP. Yeah, that's why. Yes. Again, I don't know what Shatner is, but he certainly seemed to be the EP in the room. And and yeah. and while Lavar was like, but in his mind, within that con, he was totally okay with that context and that container. He's like, within that container, I wanted to do what my FI wanted to do. And it was essentially when his FI was no longer on board that he was like, okay, I'm gonna go be an actor. Yeah. That was also that moment, because he has talked about how everyone in his family either goes into um, seminary or military. Right. Um, and it was, and he's mentioned this in a couple of different interviews, but it was in the Shatner interview that I'm like, oh my God, that is the question of NF or ST. And as a teenager, he's all NF. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Consider the ST. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. That's a really good point. That and is that, ST military or NF spirit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that was what, like, when I looked at the letters, I'm like, yeah. well, he's definitely NF and he's yeah. definitely SEFI. Uh, I mean, SENI. Exactly. Or he's got to be Savior and I. Yeah. It, it was a lot more NF than SF yeah. going on. Yes, 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 yes. Almost to the point where I think that's one of the reasons I pinged on potentially FE because it sounded like NF blast, but then I realized it was NF that's sleep. Just, that's just him. Uh, yeah. Verbalizing. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, God, I feel like I'm curb stopping <laughs> organized, but that's something that came to my mind as we were doing the intro is, you know, Roots happened in the 70s. What did he do? He remade Roots. Going back to his same known information, going to redo that. Uh, reading Rainbow happened in the 80s. What's he doing now? I'm going to go back to Reading Rainbow. I'm going to take that, build on his same known information. So it's, still, it's a pattern. It's a life pattern yeah. of like, so if if there's any sort of like thing that he, you know, that we would say like, oh, LeVar should watch out for this. It might be that control, like having that. But he seems to have learned that. And that's what I could kind of hear him saying in the interviews. And even to your point about the Kickstarter, like he's taking those known information, but he's building on it. He's making something new out of it. It's not just yes. the same yeah. roots. You know, he went and found new Kenta, new Kunta. I mean, because he's like, I mean, he's older, dude, but like, he looks young. Like, he might have been able to get away with, you know, reprising old Kunta, at least, because <laughs> Kunta gets older in the course right. of the yeah, thing. Yeah. But he didn't, you know, he like found a new person and, you know, used that SE a little bit to like, okay, we'll gather in some tribe, right? Like, let's bring new people in and stuff like that. So yeah, he's finding he tribe. Also yeah. And this is, I guess, now that I think about it, another place where he got tribe weird when he mentioned the actor who's playing Kunta in the new one, yeah. he got tribe weird about it. Cause he was like very, like, it was just like a, a second too long of attention on this thing. <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. Right. Right. That's like, it's so funny. Like I totally get what David Shannon mean by that. Cause you're right. It's just like a little bit uncomfortable now. <laughs> yes. It is so subtle. Like you don't notice it until. Yeah you review it with through that lens yeah and you're like oh yeah he did take that one just a step too far yeah okay so now that we've really killed <laughs> and I, his, his yeah so i guess both his of human his needs. yeah his human needs yeah so our self and control yeah yeah and then we also talked a lot about his f and n and the the letters and yeah yeah like yeah. That. yeah um i didn't see too much like evidence of TE, like sometimes I'll type people and say like, oh, that's clearly the FITE spectrum kind of a thing. Um, for him, I, it was just, I just saw yeah. FI, you know? Yes. Yeah. yeah, agreed. Yeah. And this is also something that I I didn't see in Keanu either. Um, I didn't see a lot of T from Keanu either. Yeah. Um, and I got him as um, an FIIP. Um, and I'm wondering if that's because it's last. And But also the other side of it is like- It's a feminine. able to- yeah. get shit done in reality 
yeah. then you're TEing. It might not be something you're talking about, especially if it's a demon. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Good point. Yeah, you might not just be preaching it. You're just doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's one of those things that you just do a lot more than talk about. Yeah. Especially. I mean, I, I heard some of it, you know. Um, and we might get into that when you when we talk about his animals, you know, because like you said, his blast is N I T E blast, right? And yeah. so like you yeah. kind of that's where some of the T E to me. Yes, I um, saw it in his blast. I didn't. Yeah. I, I think. Well, I, I guess when he, so the uh, reading rainbow, mm-hmm. reading room, reading rainbow. Um, so one of the ways that that came about was because there was, there was this, like, it got canceled, right? Um, after how many ever years, over two decades. Mm-hmm. And um, he decided, like, there was this question of, okay, let's keep it going. Mm-hmm. And so it was a very TE solution in the sense that, like, oh, there's no VC funding. What else can we do? okay, let's try to take it at Kickstarter. So he was definitely able to bring in that, like, can we make it work? Mm -hmm. Especially the SD, can we make it work in reality? And he did a great job with it, obviously. Yeah, he did. He did. Okay, so, oh, sorry for the clicking. I'm trying to find um, the next thing. Okay, the animals. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is where we were a little bit different. Um, I had him as a sleep blast, you know, rework same info and shares knowledge. Because to me, that's what he was doing, is reworking the same known information and sharing knowledge. Mm. Um, you had him as the sleep consume. Um, was it mostly because of the spectrum kind of game? Or what were you thinking? I went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, uh, Gene Simmons is NIFI, um, sleep consume. And um, uh well steve jobs and there were a couple other people there's a politician whose name i forgot are um nf nifi sleep blast and the blasters they were just the obligation to blast i felt it just from the few minutes that i saw them in a way that i did not feel from lavar and from lavar his blast like um well going back to the brent interview uh, not interview. Well, yeah, uh, oh, where sorry. Yeah, where sorry. he was on the stage with Brent uh, Spiner, um, where he was he was okay just sitting and consuming and taking in, whereas Brent wasn't. Yeah, Brent yeah, had to like, do. Brent had to lead the tribe and direct it. Yeah, I I, I kind of felt like though what Brent what Brent does is more play. Oh um, yeah. So, okay, so here- Very high play. So here's the spectrum, right? Because I, I also went back, well, I went back and forth on the demon side. I had him as Savior Blast. And part of the reason I have Savior Blast is because it felt like in every interview at some point he had to like go in a blaster lesson mode. It was just like, and that to me it is- It was always, often a blaster lesson. Yeah, to me, that's always a but Savior State thing. Wasn't the whole interview. No, it wasn't the whole interview. It, it, it was in the interviews, but- yeah. I found Savior Blast. Well, here we go. <laughs> I'm going to start giving you some examples if he's my type, the F I N I. Do you have so so and so? I did. I compared him to to these folks. The the F I N I that I use as my sort of baseline, if you will, or my comparison point is Lee F. Schreiber. I don't know if you know who he is. He's an actor. Um, so we're going to be spoiling people for a minute here sorry if they ever do a class on him um but he's a fini sleep consume play so like their mope energy okay. is way oh, yeah up. any any blast less <laughs> their mope energy yeah. is intense. yeah well blast less right okay so that's yeah. like the extreme so i was like okay he's not that <laughs> okay yeah um yeah, matt Le- definitely not blast last you know matt leblanc yes what would you have said for matt leblanc i mean i don't know how well you know him have you ever seen an interview with matt leblanc He's not the most extroverted guy in the room. Um, I I haven't yeah. paid attention on that front, but yeah. So Matt LeBlanc is sleep blast consume, and so he has savior blast, and so like that was where I was like, okay, so savior blast, a savior blast. Yeah. Okay, that's surprising. <laughs> it is. I, I would never. The... NF sleep. Yep. Wow. Yep. He's double feminine, which might weigh into that but yeah exactly you wouldn't have thought it 
anyway okay um we've already talked about jason wilson we've we haven't talked about dave but i mean dave powers is in this save your sleep you know blast area and then dave i noticed his blast is not always on also you know like even when we interviewed dave he doesn't blast you know um yeah yeah it's hard to say though, because he blasted probably about as much as Shan, and Shan is blast last. So that's you know. Dude. Yeah, but Shan also came into our interview. She was loaded up. That's true. She was loaded very, up. very much so. Yeah. And we all know how beautiful her her blast is. Yeah. So, um, so those are just some examples of some people in that area. There aren't a ton of them. Oh uh, yeah, Steve Jobs you mentioned. Sylvester Stallone is another one. He's a actually he's a similar type. Oh, Sylvester Stallone. Right. Oh, I should have looked him up. Is F I N I sleep blast play um and he's kind of that way too like he doesn't always um he doesn't always blast but when he does it's like i have to interrupt everything and tell you a lesson <laughs> and that's to me that's what i'm looking for with savior blast not that they do it for the whole interview but that do they need to like stop the train to then give you a lesson right if they yeah, just but cannot. you and i do that as well um the time. i don't know do we yeah well i think we both do and i think that's what like that activated blast like i think we yeah. well i guess this is actually one one pro towards consume we're fascinated with obviously our hobby animal our hobby demon mm -hmm. um and in that front you're right he's not fascinated with his blast but he is fascinated i think with consume he's fascinated with consume yeah um so i mean yeah so that's that's where i came down and then yeah just the the little short I definitely thing. I just I ended up definitely not on blast play because I did not see that going with him his was his was more even keel like that one is a very introvert not yeah. huge extrovert not huge introvert I agree I agree which is part of the reason I went back and forth between sleep blast consume and sleep blast play so mm. maybe we should talk about his demon animal then Okay. Yeah. Um, or info versus energy. Or info if we have anything energy. on that. Yeah. And I, you know, honestly, I like I said, I really don't type on that, so I don't have any notes on info versus energy. I find I the, added it to my checklist for Lavar. <laughs> yeah, I that one, I I can make too many arguments on it. I haven't studied, so maybe this is one of these like NESI situations where like I don't have enough SI examples that I can lean on because I could make an argument. I see patterns both ways. Like I could, I could totally see a pattern for him being energy dominant, but I could totally see a pattern for him being info dominant to me. Like, I don't right. know that well enough. Like I don't know that example well enough to be okay. like, Oh yeah, that's what I'm seeing here. So like, sense. yeah. Down. Um, so I still do just the, like, you know, is this guy now I agree. Like my first blush on him was definitely, this is a more introverted type of person. Um, so that's where, I was more um, sleep blast consumed. So if he was, if I was going to go, the only, the main thing that flipped it was that to me, he was more willing to get in and try a thing than just consume about it. Like that's pretty much it. <laughs> like, Agreed. I think that's SE though. Could be. It could be. It could because be. Because SE wants to personally experience the thing um, to better understand it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I could see that too. And I don't have a great also understanding. saw his, um, for demon play, I had, um, I added this, so I don't know if you saw this one. Um, he has a whole video where he's talking about being not afraid to fail and like that, that seemed to be a big lesson of his mm -hmm. and how I understood that and interpreted it was, um, a discovery of play in the sense that like, if I expend the energy and that energy does not land how I expect it to land, that's still okay. Yeah. Like accepting the negativity that comes with, with that demon play and expending the energy and being okay with it when like, because with sleep above play, we want to just like, we want to process the shit out of everything and only expend the energy in the direction that we choose. Yeah. So when that doesn't happen, it feels like it well, was a waste of energy so it's totally demon play like we both have them as demon play yeah yeah, yeah. so my yeah. real question is why like how consume overplay that's that's i don't I oh can't. i just i got that as far as info versus energy yeah which i kind of see as what is the punchline is the punchline 
oh my God, the information, or is the punchline, oh my God, the fun. Mm, okay. And that's where like Brent versus uh, LeVar, Brent was there just like having fun on the stage. And he was very much, I think, energy dominant. Whereas LeVar, there was even one moment where, um, where he's talking about, uh, where Brent says that somebody asks him a question about, I think like, um, is, like something along the lines of the impact, especially FI impact of like uh, the work that they're doing and all of the representation. And it was a very info question. I, I actually have a great example, but I want, you can finish, but I have a great example of your, I'm, I've switched in my head. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but go on. And, and Brent essentially says like, hey, we're here to entertain. We're not here to teach. Okay. So and here's, here's bar was quiet that whole time. Yeah. So here, here's a good one for you. So, and again, I, I apologize because I was totally driving down and this is what I heard this interview <laughs> uh, was the, the threefer between uh, Brent, Shatner, Brent and, LeVar. Yeah. and LeVar. And so to your point, so I, yeah, no, I, I agree with you that he is info dominant. And the reason is to your point, uh, what's the punchline? They took a question, right? To the mm -hmm. three of them. Uh, what are you going to do next? Actually, no, Shatner, I think Shatner was sort of playing the host and he asked, and so he was getting really pissed off at these two intuitives that just would not like talk sense him. with him. Yeah. Yeah. He was just like, God, guys, like we're supposed to be here doing stuff. Um, but uh, so he asked them or the question came in, however, and it was, what are you going to do next? And instant, like before he even finished, I was like, LeVar's going to know because he's an I, right? Right. LeVar comes with like a real answer. Like I'm doing this reading rainbow thing. And, you know, it was at the time it was like getting started or something like that. It goes to Brent. Brent says, I'm getting into prize fighting. I, I'm, I'm working on my weight class. I'm going to be fighting Pacquiao in uh, six months. And, you know, I'm, I'm training real hard. Goodbye, guys. And that was it. <laughs> like that was the end of the thing end of the YouTube video. Like he was willing to just make a goofy joke. Doesn't matter that you gave no info whatsoever. A big F right. the info. Yes. It was like, I'm going to make a funny joke. Bye-bye. I'm done. Yep. <laughs> yep. And he did that over and over and over again. He was also, yeah. So that actually is about decider versus observer. Brent was a great example of double decider because throughout the entire thing, he yep. was doing imitations of Patrick Stewart. Yep. Oh, and he's known he for that. Brent is known they're for that. Really good. I didn't know yes. that, but they're really good. But he was also like, <laughs> yep, doing it as if like he's in the room with them and like pretending he's hiding behind the couch and just like doing a yeah. shtick with it. It was very high play. Yeah. No, I yeah. dominant. Mm -hmm. It was very double decider. No, I I agree with you. The other the other sort of well, okay, we've already agreed on demon play, but I'll just another demon play thing was like, if you actually think about same with the so we're still talking about these two in contrast. Their characters are kind of their their flip side because i'm i'm kind of seeing brent as kind of your lead play goofy boofy dude and he played data yeah, right, right who has like i was no, not expecting nothing right yeah um and lavar play you know who's this lead sleep guy he played and in his mind jordy so there was this one thing where he was talking about who jordy laforge is to him or whatever and to his mind he thought jordy was very like go with it very chill he was like he's the most you know calm or not not calm but loose kind of guy in the ship like certainly more than um picard and i'm like yeah that's a pretty extreme example jordy like picard is like super straight so in, so it kind of tells you that that perspective of play is a little you know it's like oh but he does things you know <laughs> it's like peacock. Yeah. it's like a peacock yeah, yeah. type of thing yeah. like like, no, obviously Frakes, Jonathan Frakes was the most chill dude on that cast. Like, come on now, LeVar. Like, <laughs> what's not you? Yeah. I actually find that dynamic interesting. There's a couple of characters that, um, in shows that I really love that are very ST, silent, like stereotypical yeah. ISTP kind. Like, you know, where they're just like ICP mope, like where they're just totally in their own world and they're just like, let me do this. Like, yeah. Um, and then you interview the actors who play them yeah. and they're these like complete typical SFNF, like bubbly, like feels all over the place kind of thing. And it's fascinating because of the, uh, roles that people are drawn to. It's usually either exactly who they are or the yeah. exact opposite. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I'll switch it. Cause you know, it's funny when I sat down to review my uh, known information, when I sat down to review my notes um, yesterday, uh, I had sleep blast consume play. I had it that way. Okay. And I flipped it. Um, okay. But cause I, yeah. Cause I was thinking that his, the way he took in information, but either way it's a demon, right? It's either way. And so in, energy versus info is a good way to kind of figure out that last animal. So yeah, I added that to my checklist. Yeah. Because I find it to be a really, really useful one. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, I, I agree. I agree with you on that one. Um, so we kind of, did we kind of come to this? Well, okay, not really. Yeah. Well, I think we <laughs> like did. Like, show changes. <laughs> but we yes, still came but to like, we, we're factor. kind of aligning that yeah. we see them as MF, F-I-N-I, sleep, blast, consume, play. Yes. I think we're both there. Yes. Yay. Yes. Yeah. I mean, since we're learning, we're I think we get a mulligan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah of course. We each get one. Maybe we should do that. You each get to flip a coin. You could flip one. One. Flip observer decider. I'll flip energy and info and Bob's your uncle. <laughs> yeah. And I'm still, I'm still waffling on consume versus blast. Which one's the same? Oh yeah. 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 That's true. That's but true. I can, said, I can see yeah. the blast uh, well, I can see yeah. as his hobby. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I, I hear what you're saying. And so that's why I'm good flipping the the play and the consume because yeah, sleep, blast, consume, you know, the blast is going to kind of be, he's going to be it's a little, it's a little spike, but overall he's just, he's even keel kind of like, even. yeah, he's yeah. Pretty even. yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that all makes sense. Yeah. And cause me and SE, I don't fully, I, I don't fully get the difference between SE and play. <laughs> like I just don't. <laughs> interesting question especially when the person has se do you know what i'm saying like i get the difference yeah. between my play and an se play, play. yeah like, i yeah, get yeah. that totally because i'm always any te playing all the freaking time so i get that but if you have se in your stack i have a hard time telling when you're doing se when you're driven by your se versus when you're driven by your play i don't mm. really always get it <laughs> i think there was somebody who maybe it was thomas um somebody was talking about sleep versus play where oh yeah he he left this comment where i had mentioned in i think one of benjamin's interviews that or maybe one of our episodes um play tends to because it's expending energy gets things done uh -huh. right so blast gets things started and play gets things done mm -hmm. and he reframed it as actually it's not play that gets things done it's that save your sleep puts the brakes on things oh okay Interesting. Which, I mean, doesn't help with the play versus consume or like SE. Well, that's what I'm play. stuck on. <laughs> but it's, um, yeah. I've kind of re shifted it into expending energy and just like. But you, you do within your, within your sleep box though, right? Like when you're, or your savior box, right? Because yeah, you expend, yeah, yeah. in some ways, like you expend more energy than I do, you, you know, in like the day to day. Like you're more willing to, well, I guess those are spikes sort of thing. Like you're willing to like sure. get in the car and drive 10 hours, right? Whereas like, I'm always like, oh my God, sensory overload. No way I'm doing that. <laughs> like I'll avoid it. Do right. All. But that's because it's directed towards right. something that sleep process decided is important. Right. It's, a, it's within that so box. Ideally. So that's why it's like yeah. really hard for me to tell. Like, you know, like I wouldn't have, I, I, I for me, it's hard. It's hard. Yeah. So that would be an interesting question looking at SE play versus SE consume. Yes. SE play. Understand those. Yes. We should. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, any help you see can give. We, well, what do you guys think? Functions. Like, how do you <laughs> see SE consume versus SE play? She just play energied. And I'm supposed to be lead play. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> so I don't get it. I don't get yeah, it. But I'm also like. You're gathering sensory from the tribe. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but it's, I see that as consume, not necessarily play. I see play as expending energy. I also see one thing that I definitely like. Oh, so there's this definition of play from uh, psych literature. I don't remember who it's from, mm -hmm. but uh, man, I wish I could dig it up. It's something along the lines of... Um, like spending time with no agenda or no plan or something like that. Just that doesn't, I don't know, man. Hold on. No. 
Well, that's that's like you know not an OPS definition of play, but just yeah, like I mean, I, I guess definition of play, and I that is I'm definitely something I struggle with. That works. You're right. If we're talking about se play, that works. Okay, that works because n has an, you know? yeah, you have an agenda. You know, n is imagination, so there's kind of an agenda in there. Okay, that's true. <laughs> you know? um, so maybe that's se play where it just wants to. Yeah, SE. Okay, I did actually look up the word play. Engage in activity for enjoyment and recreation rather than a serious or practical purpose. So that's still, you know, I don't know, right? So, I mean, so what struck me about this definition was the absence of OI. Yes. That indicates play. Whereas for me, I have a very hard time um, hanging out with no purpose in the sense that, like, if we're hanging out and watching a movie or hanging out and having a meal, hanging out and playing a board game, I am all down for that because there's some kind of structure guiding the hanging out. Whereas yeah. hanging out, just hanging out, having conversation or something like that, like I automatically want to direct it towards something that has a structure. Yeah, me That's too. How I Isn't that the TE? Um, Isn't that the TE part though? Oh, maybe it is. <laughs> so, because I am the same way. I am the same oh, okay. way. Okay. So, and you people, also need that structure. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. We got to be doing something. Because I, I remember we're now, this is like a whole like little mini session on play, but we, I mean, it's worth having a conversation about it. Because like in the ENFP group chat, they, they were asking me, because like, they're like, hey, lead play person in here. How is it that you go out and socialize with people all the time and things like that? And I was like, I don't. I can't stand that stuff <laughs> like I think that's a very FE like oh I just want to yeah like yeah. the FEs want to just hang out like to me is, and that's why I, I told them that exact same thing that if it's a like if it's a workshop I'm there for it you know like if we're trying to solve a problem if we're board gaming you know if we're whatever as long as there's like a TE purpose of what we're doing yeah I'll, I'm there maybe that's what it is maybe yeah <laughs> That's yeah, it's it's interesting I because I also just like like I love hanging out, I love peopling, um, and right. all of that. But even when I when I'm doing that, there needs to be some little purpose to it. Yeah. And if there isn't, yeah. then I end up stepping into that yeah. role and creating something yeah. and like we're all just hanging out and like, hey guys, how about a board game? Or hey, yeah. you wanna watch something? Like, like yeah. people who like people who just like go to a bar. I'm always like, what? I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, like you just go to a bar. I just don't get it. Bars are not my scene at all. I would never do that. You would you'd never find me in a bar just chilling. I mean, my friends would have to drag me. Yeah, yeah. And, and do. That's and do with something. Way yeah. That, yeah, that's the only way I end up just at a bar. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, well that was a whole little sidebar. But it was yes, worth it. Because it, the purpose of this podcast. <laughs> no, better to understand. Because, so, we're I mean, info, because we are info dominant. Yes, <laughs> we did just have that for fun. <laughs> right right we it for are, we're so info dominant In, info dominant is all like yeah the punchline is the information exactly. regardless of, the, of whether someone is an or observer yeah and i think like I, yeah i'm getting it more because like i have like a need it feels like my the same savior drive that i have for like nt puzzling i have for like but there's got to be a reason why we just talked about this like there's got to be some good information to share here like i don't want it to just be for fun that's like oh that, yeah that can't be like it's got to have some information right 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 kind of like so it's it's like the you know how they talk about double deciders where the decidery stuff is just a little bump on the way to the observer stuff yes. it's like the energy stuff is a little bump on the way to the information <laughs> or the information stuff is a little bump on the way to the oh my god energy entertainment fun all those things yes yep yep yeah, yeah. like oh. are you having a good time seems to be a very <laughs> energy dominant question exactly like who cares i got the information <laughs> yeah exactly i'm having a good time if i'm having a good conversation right yeah absolutely okay oh, all right well that was fun this is we're triangulating on our definitions and that's... we haven't talked about modalities at all oh oh because we both had him as mf oh yeah that's right um well we talked about his mfi we talked about that which the flip side is going to be feminine tribe yeah we got that. I mean, yeah, his modalities, you know, sometimes the modalities, like with Keanu, neither one of us was solid on his modalities. And other times the modality just like, that's about the only, 
only thing that punched me in the face with him. Yeah, I think, yeah, we started a little bit on his M sensory, but as, yeah, oh my God, M sensory. <laughs> oh God, oh my God, M sensory. Yeah. I he, contemplated kinesthetic for a hot second, but I'm like, but he's really nice with the tribe. He's really nice with the tribe. Yeah, and it, it was like, um, I think in that same like decider story that I told about, you know, about the wedding and everything, he also told you specifically where that wedding was. He was like, you know, I was at the wedding, which was on the other side of the river from the right. thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> And his with with his dates it's all very very clear yeah. like on when everything happened yes very much on a timeline yeah so that's what they talk about so it's not only that he was gonna bust that guy's head in with a baseball bat sure there's that too <laughs> but it's also timeline right right because he tells you that this happened when he was in high school when he was at seminary and that <laughs> it had lasted for two years that they weren't friends and then two years later they became best friends like he yeah. tells you all of this stuff oh, and this happened like decades ago decades ago yeah meanwhile another example brent so much feminine sensory yeah yes was like oh when was this thing and he literally play energy asks the tribe the audience right there is like hey guys where is this thing when yep. when is this thing yep yep yeah yeah they'll ask him like when something happened and he's just like oh no and he actually looked a little afraid like when those types of questions would come up come when he's up. like oh crap somebody's gonna ask me to dig up my feminine sensory like oh no it's interesting <laughs> that like in trying to type lavar i feel like i almost typed brent and you almost typed shatner yes yeah what did so what do what would you call brent like if you just said what, oh what? i literally i wrote down that he's definitely play above sleep definitely double decider definitely feminine sensory and definitely energy dominant yeah my guess is nefe that's S-E-F-E. what i that's what i would i would have said nefe nefe and i think he yeah. is uh visual because he's got some punch to the tribe yes it doesn't come up very often but it happens and he's very play blast mm-hmm. Sleep blast Oh, no, he can't be sleep last because he's energy dominant. So play blast, sleep then. Mm-hmm. We just don't see much of that sleep. You just don't see much of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Although, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like accidentally typed him. <laughs> yeah, no, I was thinking the <laughs> same. Obviously Shatner. need to sit down and like. Yeah, I was thinking that with Shatner but... of like ESFP, maybe even SETE because he didn't i could see that with him i didn't see very much self with him i didn't say i didn't see a lot of self and in fact in that interview he was surprised like there was a point where lavar's like yeah what you have to tell that child is you matter and and shatner's like wait i'm wait we have to tell kids that they matter themselves (laughs) like yeah you do (laughs) it's okay (laughs) it's like with the tribe Yeah. yeah so i did kind of type chat yeah good old chat all right well, well cool. awesome i think we covered it pretty well i think um, so i this was a good one i have a tremendous amount of respect for lavar and everything that he's done he was absolutely lovely getting to know and i actually subscribed to his podcast because him reading stories from what i understand and i'm just like i'd be down oh dude that, that i forgot he had the podcast that i would have i would have put the Let's nail see. down on hobby well on hobby consume for that because he is oh. a story like he's like i'll read but i gotta do it in this hobby way just like we have a podcast where we hobby blast that's true okay touche yeah okay <laughs> so it sounds like we weren't planning to but we've kind of yeah. agreed on a type at the end of an episode i think this is the first time we fully agreed yeah that might be yeah go us we also we we came really close i'm proud of how close we we came in with the same saviors so that's good well different order but the same savior functions or whatever yeah 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 the yeah so fear of tribe chaos fear of tribe chaos yep Yep. love love me some f-i-n-i that area you do you married one one. (laughs) that area married and f sleep i did and i love lavar burton and i have for like ever like i've always known I've always known. And yeah, yeah. So one of the things that I know we're getting into other territory a little bit here, but with who we choose for typing, like, because obviously we're spending our personal time and we're going to be consuming a lot of content about them. So we want to consume about people we're interested in. Yeah. But we're picking similar types over and over and over again. We are. are. I'm like intentionally trying to look for like other energy. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see okay. I, I well, there's somebody that there's a there's a person that someone on the Facebook has requested multiple times, and I do know the, I know of the person, so I might do that as my next one. Okay. Cool. Um, 
Anyway, All right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, dear tribe, what did you think about LeVar Burton? Did you type him along with us? We'd love to hear your thoughts. And also, we would love to hear your thoughts about play and consume and SE and how we can tell the difference because this person doesn't have SE and doesn't get it. <laughs> Uh, you can find us in all the OPS Facebook groups um, and our YouTube channel, or you can email direct email us directly at objectively.typed at gmail.com. And I'm told that it doesn't matter if you don't have the type, but my masculine SI, the dot, you said objectively.typed and we don't need the dot. Is that true? Oh, yeah. With all emails, but especially Gmail, mm -hmm. um, you can stick a period between every single letter and it'll still arrive to the same really? email. Yeah. Okay. I never. Like, at a certain point, I started sticking a period between my first name and last name. Yeah, because I'm old enough to have you know cashed out Evelyn, <laughs> and I just always thought I needed that dot because masculine SI. I'm not gonna change that. <laughs> Demon masculine SI. I'm not gonna I have that. like kinesthetic memory where like when I started using the period is like de denotes <laughs> different par parts of my life. <laughs> wow. I know. <laughs> It's weird. Yeah. Anyway. So, yeah. So we'll be posting our upcoming episode topics. If you like to type along with us, um, we'd love to hear any of your suggestions for topics, people of interest, uh, questions, anything like that. So please subscribe. And thanks for listening to Objectively Typed with Evelyn. And Rasavia. And thanks. Bye. Bye. And, and scene. scene.